and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the very simple and fast growing mitered granny square. If you love all things crochet and are passionate about the craft, then you have come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future crochet videos. Now, before we leap straight into how to crochet the mitered granny, I just wanted to show you that you don't have to do it as individual small squares. You can do a continuous mitered granny blanket. Now, this is very much a work in progress, but as you can see, it is absolutely massive. Now, I have listed down below all the information for both this giant continuous mitered granny square baby blanket that is not quite yet finished and all the information for the yarn I use in the tutorial itself down in the description box. So don't forget to expand that box, hit show more where you'll find all the information for everything that I show you on this video today. All right, let's leap straight into how to crochet the very simple mitered granny square. For the mitered granny square, we're going to start with a standard two row granny. Now, if you have a preferred method for making your granny squares, then by all means, you can use that and adapt this pattern so that it fits with your preferred granny square way of making things. But for this video, I'm just gonna show you how I would do this granny square for this pattern and how I've done it for that blanket I showed you in the introduction. So we're going to start with a magic ring and we're going to chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. Then into your magic ring, we're going to place two more double crochet stitches. Now, if any point in this video I am going too fast for you, you can adjust the settings of the video itself to slow the speed down. If you are on a laptop or a computer, there'll be a little cog icon just below this video, or if you're on mobile, three little dots at the top right-hand corner of your screen. So we're going to chain three. and place three more double crochet into this center ring. Chain three. Three more double crochet into this center ring. Chain three, and place three more double crochet into that center ring. So you should have four sets of granny clusters. So to end this round, chain three, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that initial chain three that you did. Now, the easiest way to find that is to locate the top of your two double crochet stitches. You can see they're like little Vs here. So that's a double crochet, that's double crochet. This is my chain here. So I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of it. If you can't find it, don't worry too much, just sort of aim in line with the top of your other stitches. Now to get across to this corner over here, I'm going to slip stitch under the next two double crochet stitches here. So I'm just going to place my hook underneath the loops of the top of that first stitch and do a slip stitch. I'm going to go under the loops of this next one. And then I'm going to end with a slip stitch into this chain three space here. 
So I'm in the corner, ready to begin the second round. You can go ahead and tighten up your magic ring at this point. Don't forget you'll need to weave that end in later. For round two, chain three, which counts as your first double crochet and pop two more double crochet into the same chain three space. Chain three, and then working back into that exact same space here, place three more double crochet stitches to form your first corner. Now in the next three chain three spaces, we're going to place a corner into each of those. And a corner is three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all into the same space. So you should have four corners, each having three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in each. So to finish this round, we're again going to slip stitch to the top of that chain three here. So those are my two double crochet. I'm going to slip stitch here. Then leave a decent amount of tail to weave in. Pull that through and then grab your next colour. So with your next colour, you're going to join to any one of these corner spaces here. I'm just going to pick one at random. Join your yarn however you like to join your yarn. I'm just going to pop a slip knot on my hook at the back and then I'm going to bring it to the front. Now to begin round three, you're going to chain three, which counts as your first double crochet. Then into the same space, add two more double crochet stitches. Don't worry if your knot has come through when you weave in your ends, you can pull that back again. So you've placed one cluster, one granny cluster, into a corner space. Now you're going to place a granny cluster, which is three double crochet, in between the two clusters from the round below. Then into this corner space here, 
we're going to form a new corner, which is three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all into the same chain three space here. Place a granny cluster in between the two clusters from the row below. Then end with three double crochet into the next corner space. So for the mitered granny, this is where things start to switch up a little bit. We're not going to go around this final two sides here. Instead, we're going to start working back and forth just on these two sides here. So you will only have one corner for each time we go around. So this corner here. So for row four, chain three and turn. Now that chain three counts as a double crochet stitch and we're going to place granny clusters in the next two spaces in between your granny clusters from the round below. So don't forget a granny cluster is three double crochet all into the same space. Once you reach your corner, form a new corner. Three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all into that space there. Now you're going to work a granny cluster in between your granny clusters from the row below. So one there and one there, just like we did on this side. To end row four, we're going to end with a double crochet into the top of your chain three, your very first stitch of the row below. So again, it's sometimes easy, easier to count the tops of the stitches themselves. So that's the double crochet there, that's the double crochet there, and my chain three is just at the end. So end with one double crochet to the top of that chain three. Now I'm going to change color again. So fasten off your yarn. We're going to turn our work. So flip it around. Grab your next color. So you're going to join your new colour in between your last granny cluster and that double crochet 
of the row below. So into this space in between, join your new colour. So I've joined in between that last cluster and my double crochet. And now we're going to repeat row three all over again. So chain three, which counts as your first double crochet stitch and pop two more double crochets into that same space. Now place a granny cluster in each space along the side in between your granny clusters from the row below. Then when you reach your corner, form a new corner with three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. So once you've formed your corner, we're going to work our way back down the side, placing granny clusters in between the clusters from the round below. Then to end, you're going to end with three double crochet, so another granny cluster, in between your granny cluster and that chain three, which counted as your first double crochet at the end, in between those stitches there. For the next round, we're going to repeat round four. So chain three and turn. That chain three counts as your first double crochet. So we're going to place a granny cluster in between each of these granny clusters from the row below. Once you reach your corner, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all into that same corner space. Then working back down the side, place a granny cluster in between each of your granny clusters from the row below. And 
And once you reach the end of this repeat of row four, you're going to end with a double crochet into the top of your turning chain here, right at the very end. Oops, help if the yarn stayed on my hook. Cut your yarn, leaving a decent length for weaving in. And you would continue to grow your mitre granny square, repeating rows three and four over and over until it is the size that you want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and add one more colour repeat, so another repeat of row three and four onto mine and then meet me back here in just a moment or whenever your granny square has got to the size that you want it to be and I will show you how to finish off and come back round again with the border to make the whole thing square. So I added one more repeat of rows three and four to bring my square up to the size that I want it to be. Now to bring the whole thing together with the border. Now. I will be using the same colour that I started to finish my square. So what you need to find is with this very beginning granny square, you need to find the right side of your work. Now the best telltale sign of which is the right side is your tail will be hanging out the back. Now I've woven in all my ends bar this tail just so I had that visual reminder of which was the front and which was the back. So you want to have the front of your work facing you. Now I'm going to spin it around and in between this double crochet and granny cluster I'm going to join my new colour Now in this space in between the granny cluster and your double crochet, just as before, chain three, which counts as your first double crochet, and pop two more double crochet stitches into that same space. Now this is where it differs slightly from these back and forth rows because for this round, we're going to be going all the way around. So we want to turn this into a corner. So chain three, and then place three more double crochet back into this exact same spot. So we formed a corner at the edge here. Now pop a granny cluster in between all your clusters along this side section. Once you reach your corner, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all into that same corner space, just as you have been doing. Now place a granny cluster in between all your granny clusters from the row below.
Now in this final end space here in between your granny cluster and your chain three from the row below, we're going to do what we did over here and we're going to form a corner in this space. So to end, you're going to have three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet all into that same space. So we have crocheted around the two easy sides and formed a corner where there previously was not one. So now we need to crochet around the slightly more tricky sides to fully square this up. So as we work down this side, you're going to be placing your granny clusters into the spaces where you had your one double crochet or the chain three, depending which side you're on, we're going to be working into these spaces here. So you're going to skip these entire granny clusters and work into these gaps. They're pretty obvious where you see where you're going. So we're going to just place granny clusters in these gaps and then in between the granny clusters when you reach your square. So I'm skipping this complete cluster here and I'm working into the space below it. I'm working into the corner space of my entire starting granny. In between the clusters on the side. Then I'm going to place a corner into this external corner here. So three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. And then we're going to repeat this side section working back up. So in between the granny clusters of your entire square and then in those spaces in between the full clusters. Once you have reached your beginning corner, slip stitch to the top of that initial chain three to finish off squaring it off. I'm just gonna go ahead and weave in these final ends. So I've panned the camera up slightly so you can see the finished mitered granny square 
As you could see, they work up incredibly quickly because you are just working two sides at a time and then bringing it all together with that final border. They're a great little take, a little sort of twist on the classic granny square and you can make them as large or as small as you like. I did the classic change color every two rows technique, but you don't have to. You can do them in a solid color if you wanted to use color change yarn or do, as I showed you right in the very beginning, an absolutely massive continuous Continuous mitered granny square blanket. Obviously this one is still a work in progress So I have yet to come all the way back round again in white, but it works up so fast. It's it's just so fast <laughs> Please feel free to leave me a comment in the comments section down below I do my best to try and get to every single one of you and if I don't reply, please know I have definitely read your comment <laughs> So until next time Happy mitered granny square making. Bye.